diamonds in the rough. NFL Draft Diamonds. Time to shine. Hi, my name is Jimmy Williams with NFL Draft Diamonds, and today I have with me Ty Okada. Uh, he is a safety out of Montana State. Uh, nice to have you on, sir. No, I appreciate you taking the time, Jimmy. I'm looking forward to this. Cool. So, um, again, just kind of want to take some time to uh, meet you. So, um, why don't you go ahead and just kind of start us out with some of your background. Tell me maybe where you're from and uh, how you got there to Montana State. Yeah, so originally I'm from right outside the Twin Cities of Minnesota, went to Eastridge High School. I actually was a quarterback in high school, so I never played any defense, was originally a walk-on at Montana State, and got transitioned to first corner, which was great. I redshirted my first year. That allowed me to work on my feet, uh, kind of get the hang of playing defensive back down, and then slowly transition to a safety nickel, kind of playing both of those roles. So I've gotten to wear many hats as a defensive back. And so I think that that's helped me along the way in my college career as a football player overall. And that's just, yeah, that's a quick little snippet about me. Cool. So um, again, uh, I guess you grew up in Minnesota area. So um, let's backtrack a little bit to those high school days. Like as, as you were talking about being a quarterback, um, uh, first of all, um, being a quarterback, man, that's got to be a completely different change of pace about being like a defensive back, um, you know, at the collegiate level. Um, how did that transition happen? Well, to tell you the truth, I wasn't much of a true uh, pro style quarterback. I would get back there. Some of my buddies played wide receivers. If they weren't open, I would take off and run with it. So I was more of your athletic style quarterback, ran the ball a lot, ran for more yards than I threw for, wasn't, didn't have a ton of arm strength. And so I was never really projected to be a quarterback in college. I had the athleticism to continue playing, but it wasn't, it definitely wasn't going to be uh, behind center. Right. And so some, some colleges were looking at me as a slot receiver. Some were looking at me as a defensive back. Uh, my background, I was, I was a really good wrestler in high school. And so a lot of teams knew that I was getting recruited as a wrestler too. And those were some of my few uh, first offers for college was uh, wrestling actually. And so it just felt more natural playing on the defensive side of the ball, tackling, hitting. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of how that whole thing transpired. Cool. So, I mean, definitely having that, uh, you know, mentality as a wrestler. Um, uh, let's talk about that whole thing about you being a wrestler. You know, um, obviously a little bit of that um, sport uh, does translate to the game of football. How would you kind of um, word that? No, definitely. I would say that, you know, a lot of people, they, they like a lot of coaches, they definitely like the wrestlers who play football and the football players who play or wrestle because, you know, it, it translates in terms of tackling, hitting, wrapping up, all those types of things. But I think ultimately what has helped the most is just mental toughness. I mean, you don't get, you don't get that in any other sport more, more so than wrestling. I mean, wrestling teaches you that. And, and so I would say that that's the biggest direct translation um, is just is just the mental toughness that you get from wrestling. Gotcha. So um, again, uh, played other sports in high school as well on top of football, um, some wrestling. Uh, I have also baseball in my notes as well. But yep. um, let's talk about you know really why you're you you like playing football. Why what what is the whole purpose or, or what your the your whole why, man? Um, what is um, what really draws you to the game of football and why do you like it so much? ultimately the scale of competitiveness and, and, and I'm just a competitor in life. That's just, that's what draws me to football. That's what draws me to sports first off, but just the stage in which football is played on, right? It's just a bigger stage. And I love to compete. I love to compete on a big stage and ultimately it's a team sport, right? So, you know, wrestling, you get that competitiveness, baseball, you get that competitiveness and baseball is a team sport as well, but really just going to war with your brother. So being able to compete, alongside guys that you that you grind with on the off season every single day and now you get that chance on a big stage to go on and compete so that's ultimately that's that's my why in football is just competing and that's what draws me to it, and that's why I love it sure and again like um, you had said I mean um, you were a walk-on there at Montana State um, and so talk to me about Montana State man what makes Montana State uh, so special to you 
Oh man, I, I could go on and on. I don't want this interview to take too long, but Bozeman is an incredible state uh, or an incredible city, incredible place to be. Montana's, Montana's incredible. And uh, just the fan base, the support around Bozeman and around the Bobcats is so special. The team, all the guys around us, the culture that we've been able to build here it is just something that I'll take with me for the rest of my life. And it's taught me uh, so much. And I just can't thank Bozeman, Montana State enough for giving me the opportunity to just come in. And they've embraced me. And, and I just can't say enough good things about uh, the state of Montana and Bozeman and Montana State. Cool. And again, um, again, I, I don't necessarily want to fix uh, fixate on this too much, but you were a walk on. I'm assuming you were eventually put on scholarship, right? Yeah, definitely. I was very fortunate to get put on fairly early. I, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there if you had something. No, it's okay. I, I just wanted you to share that one moment when you did actually finally get that scholarship. Oh, yeah, that was that was something special. It's something I'll never forget. Called my parents right away. I mean, very, very emotional time. It's something that I worked extremely hard for and I was just very blessed to be put in that position and have that opportunity to earn that scholarship and, and just work my way up and and have that happen was just a blessing. Awesome. Uh, so let's kind of move forward a, a little bit. I mean, um, I want you to kind of describe your guys' defense um, and how you fit in, in that defense. So you already did a little bit, but I mean, I just kind of want you to elaborate a little bit more uh, on that. Yeah, most definitely. So we run a 4-2-5 defense and, you know, a lot of defenses that run this, you know, they'll switch their nickel. So I play the nickel position and they'll, you know, depending on the personnel, if they go into 12 personnel, 20 personnel, whatever it may be, um, a lot of defenses will switch in a Sam linebacker. And what I've loved about this defense in, in my play style is I've been able to wear both types of hats when it comes to playing nickel. Like I'm the guy that can come in and play in the box and I can also play outside and cover a slot receiver. Right. And so we play our four, two, five, a little bit different in terms of we, we permanently keep the nickel out there. And that's been a ton of fun. We, we disguise a lot. We try to mix our calls up. We're, we're very, you know, we play a lot of post high. We play a lot of man. But when we do run our zone concepts, we're out there, we're trying to disguise and, and throw off the offense. And that's just, we don't tip our, tip our hand at all. And it's been a ton of fun bringing pressure. We do a lot of different things on third down, which is just incredibly fun to game plan week in and week out. And, and that's just kind of, we, we keep things fresh on this defense. And that's what I love about it. Awesome. And let's just kind of zero in really on you. I mean, um, what do you feel you bring to the table um, the most? I mean, what do you feel separates you the most as a prospect when we're looking at you transitioning to the next level? I definitely would say it's my versatility. As I was saying earlier, I've gotten the opportunity to now play every single defensive back position, whether it be corner, nickel, or safety. So that allows me to play in the box, play outside, play in the post, play in a deep half, come in on blitzes. I, I can, I'm a kind of do it all defensive back. And I think that definitely separates me and also playing those positions has allowed me to really excel in, and understand the defense as a whole and what we're trying to get done and what everyone is doing, whether it be, you know, I communicate with the linebackers, I communicate with the defensive line, and obviously I'm communicating with the defensive backs. And so just having that uh, depth and knowledge of what the defense is, un the understanding of the defenses has really helped me and separated me uh, from other defensive backs as prospects. Cool. And, you know, there is a part of me and I don't necessarily want to, you know, go back to this too much, but your experience actually playing as an offensive player, going back to your high school days, being that quarterback, having that understanding of offenses and what offenses are trying to do and being able to see that from the exact opposite perspective. There's a part of me that feels like that in and of itself does help you out so much. So um, as a prospect, so um, it, it's just kind of interesting looking at you in that regard. Um, I will say also, you do bring a, a, a whole lot uh, to the table, at least from our correspondents. I know that you've um, developed a whole lot over the years, you know, as, as a player, as an athlete, um, you know, really taking, um, taking this whole weight room thing seriously. So um, talk to me about how that has developed for you over the years. Yeah, without a doubt. That was something in my recruiting process that I was trying to get across to the coaches. I was an extremely late bloomer, but I knew that that was 
kind of going to be the case between, you know, growing up wrestling and in that kind of stunting my growth between, you know, cutting weight a little bit, but also understanding that my dad in college grew two inches, gained a whole bunch of weight. And I was kind of on that same trajectory. So that was, a. it's funny because these were conversations that I was having with college coaches in the recruiting process and trying to sell myself was, Hey, you know, I know I'm undersized right now, but I have a lot more growing to do. You know, if you look at my x-rays, um, anything like that, you can see a whole bunch of space left and in, in for my bones to grow. And that was kind of, it was funny having to try to market myself in those ways. But, you know, I was a guy growing up, I always took the weight room seriously. And, and I was very fortunate to be surrounded by a lot of great coaches that helped me along the way, even from an extremely young age. And, and just because of my development path, I wasn't able to quite see the benefits of that early on but I knew that eventually it would catch up and help out a ton. And I've been extremely blessed getting to Montana state with coaches like coach Wilcox, the strength coach that I originally came in with and now coach Heron. And they've just helped take that in a, a step further and allowed me to develop as a player and as a person. And that that's helped tremendously on the field. Cool. I appreciate you shouting out your uh, coaches there. I mean, obviously a very excellent program. Um, I, I want you to also, uh, Shout out a couple names there that people need to know, man. Like, I know that there's some great players that Montana State has this upcoming season. Um, who are the guys that we need to keep our eyes on uh, this season? Oh, my gosh. There's so many guys. I, I'm really excited to watch my own roommate, RJ Fitzgerald, that fullback. He's he's really special. And he's one of those guys behind the scenes that just gets the job done. And he's an incredible person, incredible teammate. And he's just there. Um, Cal. Cal's, I play on, you know, the same side as Cal, and he's incredible. I love playing alongside him because, you know, he's going to be making plays left and right. And I think uh, a guy that could surprise a lot of guys, it may not even be a surprise because it sounds like it's kind of, words kind of getting out that he's going to be a beast is uh, Brody Greeby. You know, athletically, he's an extremely gifted guy, but also an incredibly hard worker. And so I'm excited to see all that come to fruition this next year. And I'm excited to see, you know, obviously Tommy Malott came out and, and, uh, had an incredible uh, end of the season last year, and he's going to build upon that this next year. And, and just a whole bunch of guys, the list goes on. I just can't wait to watch more guys emerge on both the offense and defensive side of the ball for us. Cool. Definitely a whole lot to uh, look forward to this upcoming season. Um, but I do want to just kind of take a little retrospective a little bit. I mean, during your time there, I mean, uh, what's been the biggest highlight so far? I mean, is there maybe a game or a play that you kind of want to walk me through? Uh, the biggest highlight, I, I think it would come as no surprise, making it to the national championship. And I say that just because not even the game itself, really, it was uh, the process it took to get there for that team. We had been through a lot with coaching changes, with guys coming in and out. I mean, it was it, for that group of guys and injuries. I mean, there was just a lot going against us that season. And, and for that group of guys, it was just something special for us to make it there after you know, persevering through all those, you know, trials and tribulations. And it was, it was, it was just an extremely special moment to finally get there. And it, it felt very earned. Cool. And uh, one last thing that's, uh, I don't know, a little psychological, so to speak, but if you were able to get, kind of go back in time and maybe talk to your younger self, maybe in high school, um, any advice that you might give your, your younger self? I would just say, continue betting on yourself. I know there was times when I first came in as a walk-on that, you know, I bet on myself by becoming a walk-on, but ultimately there were, there were times where, you know, I was doubting, am I good enough? Am I big enough, strong enough, fast enough? And the answer was always yes to those questions. And I would just always tell myself, you know, stay the course and continue betting on yourself. Cool. Lo lo love all those answers, man. I think that you got a lot going for you, at least a good focus as a player. So um, re really interesting, um, you know, things that you've shared so far. Um, I do want to kind of step off of the whole idea about football. I do want to I want to know who this guy is, man. I mean, who is Ty Okada? So um, tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, that's maybe fun, interesting, unique, special hobbies or whatever, man. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, uh, something unique about me, I actually grew up going to a Spanish immersion school, so I'm, I'm fairly fluent in Spanish. That's something that maybe people don't know, and so that's that's a little bit different. People are kind of surprised normally when I when I tell them that. Interesting. So fluent in Spanish? Yes. Yep. No, I was very fortunate. It was a part of the public schools out in uh, Minnesota, and I kind of would just went into a drawing. It was very random. My parents put me into a drawing to get selected. I got selected, so I thought, well, 
better go. <laughs> from no, no, since it's, kindergarten. No. I've been, you know, since kindergarten through middle school, five out of the six hours of the day, I was taught in Spanish, uh, social studies, science, math. So no, it was, it was a really great experience. And I, and I love having that ability to speak Spanish and just talk to, you know, be able to communicate with other people. I, I I've left the country before and have been able to, uh, hold great conversations with people across the world. And it's, it's been incredible. Cool. Um, uh, try to see if I can come up with maybe one more non-football related question. So um, uh, obviously your goal is to get to the next level. Maybe one of these days, get one of these big fat checks. Um, and so um, uh, thinking about along the lines of, you know, you, you, if you have the opportunity to maybe give to maybe one charity or cause, and I don't know if you've ever thought about that, but um, what might you spend that money on um, if given the opportunity? No, I, I have given that thought. And I really appreciate you asking that question because that's something very special and I hold near and dear. I would I would absolutely, a cause that I would love to give to is the Miracle League. It's something that uh, my mom is the park and rec director back in Woodbury, Minnesota. She helped start with the whole Miracle League field. And, and I had the opportunity to have uh, I mentor kids growing up that, you know, maybe had mental or physical disabilities, but they, they were very capable and going out and playing baseball. And it's something that they love to do. And, and it gave them the opportunity to compete. And so that's something that I would love to continue to grow, not only back in my hometown of Woodbury, but give other communities that same opportunity so that kids can go out and compete at whatever age and just whatever ability just to go out and have fun, be with their friends. And it, it's something that's super special to me. Shout out to Bryce Madsen, actually, I'd love to share this with him. He was one of my Miracle League buddies that I, I've been very close with. And, you know, if, if you're listening to this, Bryce, man, love you. I hope you're doing great. Cool. Again, Ty, nice to, you know, really get, get a chance to uh, learn those other things about you, uh, again, more than just a football player. So um, as we uh, wind down our interview, um, I want to give you one last opportunity, man. I mean, I know that there might be some scouts that are looking, that are maybe watching this video right now. And so I want you to address them directly and tell them why they need to take a chance on you, maybe draft you, sign you, and what you would bring to their franchise. So um, uh, go ahead and uh, and give them your pitch. I'm, I'm just a guy who is willing to do anything and everything to help your program and your organization out, right? And that's, that's a guy who's coming in and and my goal is always to get on the field and, and play as a defensive back, but I, I know the road and I, I've had plenty of experience on special teams and as well as, you know, playing all positions as a defensive back. And so you're just, I'm just going to be a do it all guy for any organization that takes a chance on me. And, it, and I've proven time and time again, if you take a chance on me, you're making the right decision. And so I'm just looking forward to any and every opportunity that I get and, and I'm going to take it head on. I mean, definitely a grinder, man. I mean, you um, really um, just bet on yourself there going to Montana State, you know, came in as a walk on, you know, immediately, you know, proved yourself there. And, you know, you've you've done so much uh, there, you know, as is, you know, just kind of showcasing your versatility, you know, your leadership, your character, um, so much that you bring to the table as a prospect. And I, I just know that someone is going to take a chance on you. So I uh, do wish you best of luck this upcoming season and uh, everything that you got going on in your life. All right. Well, Jimmy, I appreciate the kind words and I really appreciate you taking the time. It means a lot. Sure. Once again, Ty Okada, defensive back, Montana State. Uh, definitely check him out this season. Appreciate it.